And welcome back to Houston Newsmakers, where there is a lot to talk about regarding a first of its kind exhibit at Holocaust Museum Houston. And we've got all the big shots in the house to do it. Dr. Kelly Zuniga is the CEO of Holocaust Museum Houston. Michelle Tovar is the Associate Director of Education, Spanish Outreach and Latin American Initiatives at Holocaust Museum Houston. That's a mouthful. And Steve Velasquez is the Associate Curator with the National Museum of American History, Smithsonian Institution. Thank you all for being here. I don't think I've ever been with the heavier head hitting <laughs> group, but this <laughs> is a good you. thing. You know, this is very interesting to me. First of all, the title got me, Bittersweet mm -hmm. Bracero Program. What's it all about? How does it end up at Holocaust Museum Houston? Well, first of all, we are so fortunate to partner with the Smithsonian on this very important exhibition because it's never been to Houston before. It has traveled all over the United States to over 60 institutions, and it's telling a historical moment that has really never been told. And from the perspective of history and tying it to our mission, where it's so important to fight hatred, prejudice, and apathy, using the lessons of the Holocaust, we really emphasize that type of educational mission. And this exhibition focuses on social injustice and a fascinating story. It does seem fascinating to me, Michelle. I know when I started reading about it, it really is startling how many kinds of things were happening to the, quote, Braceros, who people who were, for those who don't know what that is, t briefly tell people who, who are, what is the Bracero program? What was that all about? The Bracero program uh, began in 1942 and it lasted through 1964. And so Bracero means, it comes from the word brazos. So it's a ma man who worked with his, with his arms. So this program was important for us to bring to the museum because it's not told in, in history, as Kelly mentioned, and it's not taught in schools. So we felt it was very important to talk about this history and in the and the aspect of bringing it to light to students. And so, Steve, I'm guessing the, the part of this was that so many people were brought to this country for the purposes of work. The totally opposite from what we hear now. The dialogue is about building walls and keeping people out. People out. Well, the history says it was another kind of entrance, was it not? It was. Uh, it started off as a World War II measure, bringing in guest workers to fill in the labor shortage needs uh, in agriculture and railroads. And th during the war period, um, there were uh, thousands of men that came through. In the whole 22 years of the program, they signed about two and a half million contracts. Uh, no, four, four and a half million contracts, two and a half million men came through that program to work in the fields, work in the railroads. And did many of them stay after their contracts were up? How did that work? Um, we don't have the numbers of how many stayed, how many went. Uh, you, you would get a contract for up to 18 months and then you would be sent back to Mexico. When someone comes to the museum, what kind of experience can they expect to see? Well, I've seen pictures of some other people and you can see those, but what do, does the person who comes to the museum, what are they gonna be in, 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 in for? Well, there are beautiful panels. It's in the central gallery and uh, there are photos of that period that there were documented starting from 1942 that actually you can see the Braceros, their living conditions, the experience that they had as they were processed but also it's very sensitive because it looks at the family life and the implications on the family. And how important is it to have the bilingual piece of that so that everybody can come and feel very comfortable when they come to right, this? Right, it's very important. Uh, we, we enjoyed this exhibition because it, it provides an inclusive space so family members can come in and read along with their student and feel comfortable as you said. What was the process of accumulating this? I mean, you said it's been around in the United States, it's been around for a bit, but we haven't seen it up until now. Talk about the process of bringing all of this information together to put it into one exhibit. Um, well, the, the, the project started off as a Bracero oral history project. It was a collaborative project with University of Texas El Paso, Brown University, uh, USC, where we came together, uh, experts um, and students, to go around documenting the history of the experiences of these men. It started off because we have uh, uh, 1,700 images by a photographer named Leonard Nadell, who went to Mexico in 56 and 57 to document the Bracero experience. And we wanted to bring those images to life by recording these experiences, these oral histories. Um, it started in 2006. Uh, we went up to about 2009, 2010, and we recorded about 700 oral histories. Um, and uh, the experiences of the men, of the families, 
of the workers. Yeah, because that's important. When you talk about the men, but when you, uh, associated with that, all the family, everybody in the family is impacted as a result of that. When you think about millions of people, mm -hmm. that's a real big emphasis and an impact. What do you hope people will take away? When they come out of that exhibit, what are you hoping they're going to feel and have a remembrance about? I think it's important from the perspective of how our government and how we treat others within our country. There's a lot of uh, parallels regarding discussions on immigration currently, but the importance of maintaining civil liberties and the fact that human beings and their quality of life and their agreements should be carried forth. Uh, I think also just treasuring the humanity themselves and the fact that they were here to help the United States had a terrific impact right. economically on the United States, but also uh, respecting their culture and they as individuals is very important. But since you're really close to this, what kind of feedback have you gotten from this and what is your joy when you get that feedback? Oh, such wonderful feedback. Um, we did have the opportunity to start collecting stories here in Houston from local braceros with a professor from Texas Southern University, Dr. Jesus Esparza. So with that um, video we had up during the exhibition, we had family members come up and talk to us and tell us how they felt very validated, and it was, it was a very significant moment for them. This whole process, and I understand this uh, oral history piece is going to continue in some capacity after the exhibit moves on? Yes, sir. It will be going on through May, so we will be collecting the stories, and hopefully at the end of the time that the exhibit is at the museum, we do hope to feature these stories, at the complete stories at the museum for everyone. So for those who don't know, um, how much is it to come into the museum and be able to see this exhibit? Well, if you're a student, and uh, you... I'm a student of life. Of course. <laughs> You get to come in free oh, always, good, good, all good. right? <laughs> but all students are free. Adults are $12. Uh, military is $8. And um, our website is hmh.org if you'd like more information on the exhibition and our times. You know, that's really, really comfortable financially. That's, yeah. that's no reason <laughs> not to reasonable. go. As a reminder, it's now through Sunday, May 17th, the that's next year. So there's plenty of time to, in, to go, make it a point to go to the Holocaust Museum Houston. You can go to the website, hmh.org, or you can call 713-942-8000. Kelly, it's good to see you it's good again. to see Michelle, you Michelle, good to meet you. Steve, thank you so much for coming in. As I said, Great to be among heavy hitters, and we've done that here again this morning. Very powerful exhibit. Thank, Thank you for you bringing so much. it.